Hello everybody, praise be to God, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. So today, we're going to find the medicine that is hidden throughout this map, uh, learn the next magic spell from the town, and go to palace number three. Should be fun times all around. So we've actually seen where the medicine is, we have to just backtrack for, to the beginning of the swamp. Now that we have the hammer, we can destroy a rock covering a cave. Oh, hi, fairy. Yep, here it is. Out of my way, Octorox. Alright, so we've got a good amount of level ups in every category now. I'm, we're quite strong, so that's good. Ouch. Stupid fish bones. <sighs> What the heck? I'm off the bridge. Oh, hi, you. <laughs> Gorax are much easier now that we have the downstab. Wow, that he died fast. Whew. So that looks like the red potion from Zelda 1. That is not a red potion. That is rubber medicine that we have to give to an NPC. I did not want to use the shield spell, I wanted to use the life spell. But that's okay. When we go to the next town, we can just refill our magic and we will be a-okay. Alright, good riddance to that cave. So we're going back to the uh, river town of Mido. Because that's where the lady's like, Oh, my daughter is very sick. Well, our medicine will help heal her. So first off, we'll top off our life. Magic lady, please refill my magic. Alright, here we go. Talk to this lady. The water of life! Quick, come with me! And we can heal her daughter, except no daughter in here, no siree. This is just another house with a basement and a magic spell. It was all just a test to see if we were worthy of this spell. This magic word will give you power. That's very vague. This gives us the fairy spell. The fairy spell is a very interesting spell. It literally turns us into a fairy, which lets us fly around. Being able to fly is very nice, except while we're a fairy, we can't attack, or get keys, or like pretty much anything besides fly. So yeah, it's a bit of a trade-off. However, you can also use this to fly through locked doors. It's an expensive magic spell, but it's a very good one. Alright, now we're going to the third dungeon. And you'll remember somebody who's like, Error knows the way to the palace. Well, if we talk to him, he'd be like, Oh yeah, uh, head south from King's tomb. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Ouch. So this cross right here... This is King's Tomb. Alright, so we leave, and now we're just gonna walk down. And we will fall into an invisible cavern in here. Ouch. Ouch. Take those, you stupid bugs. So this brings us to this cavern. That is much too high of a ledge to even use the jump spell to get up, so we need the fairy spell. So that took most of our magic, and now we are a fairy. We can fly around. But again, we can't attack. Now that we have downstab, we can kill those guys at last. Get out of here. All 
Alright, and this brings us to a special island. And now, welcome to Palace Free, the Island Palace. And sure enough, that did not give us our red jar, but rather that just created a red iron knuckle for us to deal with. Still, free experience. That's always nice. <laughs> Sorry about that. This guy's an interesting enemy. I don't know his name, but he throws boomerang maces at us. Actually, that might be a dark nut. I don't know. And now we've got Stalfoses with helmets, which makes them even tougher. But it only gives them more defense. Oh, yes, please. Let's us heal, and it almost tops off our magic as well. So Palace 3 is actually a bit more simple to deal with than Palace 2. There's less floors, and less, uh, non- all the paths are pretty linear, so that's nice. And yeah, you can see the Handy Glove, it can actually be annoying in this area, because it can destroy those rocks when we don't want to destroy rocks. Get rid of those guys, and let's keep going. Oh boy, poser back. As are these, falling rocks. But the Handy Glove lets us take those out pretty easily. So we're basically just going to go in a straight line to the right. There's a key down there. We do want to get that key. And what we're going to do is a little clever trick. We're going to destroy those two rocks, and then we're going to destroy those two rocks, and then we're going to destroy these three rocks. And then we can just jump on out. With a lot of power, those guys are pretty easy to deal with. We also want that pea bag. Alright, so Link can jump up these free rocks at a time, he just needs to jump at just the right time and have a running start. Doing that, you can avoid the Iron Knuckles. Red Stalfoses are not that hard. We can level up life if we want, but I'm trying to save up so I can level up attack again at the end of the dungeon. Alright, this is, this is a very tricky jump to make. It is possible to do without the jump spell, but it's very tough. There we go! And hey, we're actually leaving the dungeon. Or rather, there's just a, a room in this dungeon that's outside. Red Iron Knuckle, you are really annoying to deal with. You know that? He does know that. Ouch. They only take two hits to uh, kill now, though. That's nice. Also, the boss of this dungeon is deceptively difficult, so just be prepared for that. So we've got a couple keys. We can now go down this elevator. We're going to go this way. Thankfully, our shield can block those guys' fireballs. Otherwise, they'd be very annoying to take out. It seems that running stabs tend to do better against Iron Knuckles. Alright. So there's an elevator that we can go down in if we so choose. I do not so choose. Just keep stabbing them in where their shield isn't, and eventually they won't uh, defend against it. These wolf heads are a little annoying. Alright. Are these guys just infinitely spawning? I actually forget. Alright. Ouch. Knock it off. These guys are so annoying. I just want to get the freaking key, okay? So knock it off. I 
Just I'm trying to make a staircase. These guys are so annoying because they never stop spawning. Now, there's a dungeon item in here that we definitely want to get. And by that I mean we need to get it. Eh. It's through this way. Hi. Ah. Those guys are the worst! Like, literally, you kill it and then they spawn immediately. And I was trying to... I was trying to hit the statue to see if it would drop me some magic, but that's not necessary anymore, because you get full magic when you die. I'm on my last life. This is not good. I don't want to be on my last life. I don't want to push him off a cliff, so... So here's the thing, I really, really, really want to level up my attack. Thing is, I don't have any extra lives at this point, and the boss is pretty tough. I'm gonna take the risk, but <laughs> this could go very bad if I don't get it right. Oh, no! <sighs> well, the one nice thing is that... <laughs> pretty much have to go for the entire dungeon anyway, so I'll be killing all those enemies that I would have normally along the way. So yeah, Dungeon 3 is easier to navigate than Dungeon 2. Oh, that's nice, thank you. It's easier to navigate than Dungeon 2, but the enemies are tougher. Alright, so this brings us back to where we were in the past. Oh, okay, that doesn't even drop any magic. hey yo Out of my way. That barrier there at the end is just so you can't just ferry over the entire room. Because you can't break blocks when you're a fairy. This is a blue iron knuckle! They are even worse than red ones, because not only are they better with their shield, they also have more HP and are more powerful, and shoot sword beams at you. I'm gonna shield against this guy. That way, when I take damage, I can just do a jump slash through him to deal a lot of damage. That is the best way to uh, damage him, by the way. Keep in mind, I have shield equipped, so he's doing less damage to me than he normally would. Anyhow, we beat him, we get from here, and we get the raft. That literally just lets us sail to one spot, which is a, a, basically a different hemisphere of the world map, where all the rest of the stuff in the game is. Convenient, that. I'm also not sure what happens if you don't pick up the raft and you beat this dungeon, because the dungeon turns to rock! So basically, get that raft, or you will not be able to beat the game. Either that, or you can still enter the dungeon before... Uh, <laughs> as long as you haven't gotten the raft.
So these things spawn at head level, I believe. So if you jump in the air, you can make them. Sp you can trick them into spawning higher up. All right, let's go this way. I still have all my lives, so I say that now. Wait, no, I don't. I died earlier. Oh shoot, that's right. I died to the blue iron knuckle. No, stop it. Once again, I am playing with a lot of fire here. Because the boss is one of the toughest bosses in the game. At this point, I'm just fighting enemies on the off chance that they will drop magic for me. Ouch. I'm dead. I'm dead. There's no way I will be able to beat the boss. Especially if this guy's here, shooting sword beams at me while I'm trying to concentrate. Alright, so there's a red iron knuckle down here. Oh great, and the blue one's gonna be shooting me through that doorway. Gunan. Oh yeah, I'm not done. Oh shoot. These are the... Well, I have no experience, I guess, so these guys aren't as bad. Every time you touch those guys, they steal your experience. I died to a Stalfos. Humiliating. You're going to want full life and full magic for this boss, I'm just saying. He is incredibly difficult. Yeah, this is where the game really starts kicking you in the teeth with the difficulty of the enemies. Once blue iron knuckles are introduced, all bets are off. <sighs> Enemies are too powerful. Alright, cool. Blue Iron Knuckles off screen. Which means I stand a chance against this guy. Alright. I believe this is. Yeah, I think this is the boss room. Yep. Equip shield. Welcome to the boss. The riding blue iron knuckle. So first he's on this horse. And the horse part is actually really easy. You just do a down stab on him. But once uh, his horse is gone, he turns into just a blue iron knuckle. And that alone makes him one of the toughest bosses in the game, because blue iron knuckles are such a pain in the butt to deal with. That. Oh yeah, and he can scroll himself off screen, but he doesn't actually die if he does that. No. He just gets invincible. And because he constantly is moving away from you when you get close to him, it's like, oh, you wanted to win? No, that's not gonna happen. Guess what? Oh, oh, oh. You know what? Forget it. I've tried that dungeon so many times and I just keep on dying because the enemies are so bloody powerful. So, new strategy. We got the raft out of the dungeon, so I'm going to sail to the next hemisphere, learn some new powers, and hopefully level grind a little bit. Because we still need to level up life and magic four times a piece and then two times for attack. That's plenty of room for error, so... We can sail off of this island, and onto this one. Now the enemies here are little Gahama spiders that we can't actually damage right now. Yeah, that's fair. 
We're going to this village. Welcome to Naburu, the Desert Sage of the Spirit Temple. Let's see what's around here. Hey, dude, what's up? With boots, I could walk on the water. Oh, uh, you spelled Jesus wrong, dude. But in all seriousness, the boots do let you walk on water in this. They're one of the dungeon items. Hey, miss. What's up? Yeah. I am thirsty. Okay, lady. Well, there's a water fountain right here. Why don't you drink from it? Want to get some water? Yes. Here, take this. You have water. Come with me. Oh, yeah. That's one of the simplest ones to do. This magic will make your sword shoot fire. And we get the fire spell. This is a very cheap spell to use, and it, like he said, it lets us shoot fire out of our sword. Fire is needed to kill quite a few enemies, like the Kahama spiders that we saw earlier. And this makes this area, like, the best level grinding spot in the game. We can just enter a battle, cast fire on ourselves, and then destroy the Kahama spiders. And because we have such high strength, we should be able to take them out pretty easily. Hey lady, what's up? See a man in Durunia before the islands. Thank you. Durunia is another town. Man, this was a big town. Hey, dude, get it back here. So yeah, only a few hits with fire will kill these guys. They only give 50 experience points a piece, which you might think is not very good. However, every five spiders you kill will either drop a red magic jar or a pea bag worth 200. And because we're right next to the town of Naburu, if we ever get low on magic or life, we can just hop in there for a quick refill. And sure enough, in just two battles, we now have 450 experience points. So I'm going to do this and level up my life and magic at least once. I've grinded a decent bit. I leveled up my life once and my magic once. So I'm good. I'm pretty strong now. And before we end the episode off, I want to explore this upper area and hopefully get another heart container and maybe another magic container. These are Zoras. Yes, those are the same Zoras as from the first game. They are now on land and look like weird mutant dogs. My, how the times change. out of here. I actually don't remember exactly where all the life heart containers are. That's where a Link doll is. Remember that for later. I know there's one on the sandy shore somewhere.
Alright, so I now have level 6 magic, level 5 life, and level 6 attack. So that one level up in life and the two level ups in magic are really, really, really going to help me for the third palace. Which are, we are going to finish up in the next video, because we are out of time for this one. Thanks for watching, I'm Colorful Artie. If you tune in next time, in addition to finishing the third palace, we'll also be exploring more of this new hemisphere. Hope to see you then. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless. And I have to die again? Are you serious? Man, I wish I had a second controller port, but that doesn't work on a computer now, does it?